Hello, and today I'm going to look a little bit at some artwork. I'm going to just take you through a very quick uh, doodle piece of art that I nicked off YouTube, and I'll put the link to the original video that I got this idea from, <laughs> because if you look at the original video, you'll see that it's an awful lot better than mine. But um, here is here is the piece of art that I've done and I'll show you how to do it and take you through it step by step. As you can see, the there's a crack that's opened in this sort of terrain that's either side of the, the, the crack, this ground, this spiralled weird ground and there's a uh, a hole that uh, that you can fall down maybe that impression is given by the shading that I've done and I'll show you how to do these sort of weird spiral things step by step but that's the uh, that's the picture that we're going to do today and it looks quite complicated but actually it's really quite easy and I'm going to show you how to do it give it a try yourselves and uh, Send your pictures into school and see how you get on. The things I will need or you will need for this piece of art are, of course, a piece of paper. I've got A4 paper here. Uh, I have a Sharpie. Um, any kind of felt tip will do. I didn't have a black one, so I'm, I'm doing it in brown, but this looks pretty good in black and is easier to shade with uh, normal pencils and whatnot. So because I've got a brown Sharpie, um, I'm using a brown coloring pencil to get the effects that you see there. So where I want it to look darker in the, in the chasm to give you shadow, I've used obviously a brown pencil and uh, my shading is heavier down here. I've also used, um, uh, a sketching pencil as well for, to give it a bit of darkness because I couldn't get dark dark enough brown but you can you, you can find a darker brown pencil or somehow just make that obviously darker so I basically used a sharpie a coloring pencil and a rubber for where I've gone over the edges in a couple of places so and that's all you need and a piece of paper so job done First thing I'm going to do is do a border. It's quite difficult because I've got a broomstick with a camera on it right in front of my face. So I'm, this might be, uh, this might just be a complete disaster. Don't worry about making mistakes too much. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, especially the first time you do it. So there we have a little border. That just gives us an idea. It just gives a nice frame to the picture. And then I'm going to do, and you might want to count out like that. So I'm going to do one, two, three, four, five points down here. One point up there. One, two, three, four, five. So five on each side and space them out maybe in different places. So. Now I'm going to come back the other way. A little one there. So there you go, something like that, okay? 
Now we are going to do some lines out following, and that's only a little one, following one of the lines And there. There we go. And we are going to do our squirrely designs on top of that. So what you want to do is start, so say I'm going to start from this one here. I want to come down, but instead of going straight along the line I've already drawn, I need to come one little point inwards. So if I do that, I've gone one point inwards. Then I need to go to the next vertex of this shape and go one point inwards. Okay, this one's only a very short one here. One point inwards, one point inwards, one point inwards, I've made that, I've, I've done that wrong already. So don't worry if you make a mistake because once it, it'll all come out in the wash. And don't worry that they're not the most straight lines. There you go. There's that first one. And actually that looks, that looks all right. Now, where I went from this point inwards that way, I want to do the opposite on the next shape, the shape next to it. So I'm gonna start from this line. Instead of going that way and inwards, I'm gonna go this way and inwards. Okay, so this is going to go there. And that would have gone inwards. You kind of get used to it as you go. And it, it's actually a bit easier than you think. So now I'm going to do the opposite to what I did that, that time. Mistake here. Eventually, that's become a triangle. There we go. And then again, we reverse. Format like that. There we go, it's beginning to take shape. And I'll probably speed up the rest of this uh, part of the video just so you get an idea of uh, how to do it, um, but without it taking forever to show you.
Now, I found that quite difficult because, first of all, um, <laughs> I've got this massive pole in front of my face <laughs> and it's really difficult to uh, to actually coordinate my arms and as well my fingers don't quite do what I tell them to. So now what we're going to do is we are going to draw our straight lines down to give the uh, feeling that there's a chasm, that there's some kind of um, hole that's been created. So So some of these, you're going to have to try and draw straight lines, but things don't have to be perfect. Right, so there we have our basic chasm and actually those lines already make it look quite different. I'm a bit annoyed about that line but you know hey ho. Then what we do is we want the ones that go in to have the darkness around them. So that one needs to have darkness around it. You'll see what I mean by that. Okay the darkness around the one that goes in at the top. Darkness in these corners here. Okay, so what that means is either side of that line, we are going to make that dark. And then we're generally going to have quite a lot of darkness towards the bottom anyway, as the hole goes down. And I'll darken this with some grey as well, because I can't get this brown to go quite as dark as I would like. And it's worth remembering that shading should always go in the same direction pretty much, certainly for this type of colouring. So we want all of our colouring to go up to down. Don't start going across. You start going across, it's going to look rubbish. So as we get towards the edge of each of these bits that come out, you want to do it lighter. So it goes from dark to light. And as I said, we might get some darker colour in there as well. I might just, I said don't go the other way, but just down that line, I just want there to be a bit of darkness. Same for here. Really dark in that corner. Right, so.
Remember, when you are shading, always try and do the movement from your elbow so that your lines are straight. If you try and do it from your wrist, you'll get curved lines. I want straight lines and I want straight lines, which means my movement has to come from the elbow. So I plant my elbow on the table, right? And then everything else flows from my elbow, really. And these tiny bits, I have to use more of my wrist. And my fingers. Now let's get out to the larger bits I want to be coming from my elbow. A little bit darker at the bottom here. And if you have a sketching pencil or a dark pencil, try not to ruin it, obviously, but you can go over some of these darker areas. Now I'm going a bit sideways there because I know I can smudge with this pencil so it doesn't look as bad. So here we have a pretty much finished piece. I might want a bit more shading here. As we go up. And we get darker as we go to the middle. And there we have our final chasm in the weird ground doodle picture. So I think that should be easy enough to give it a go. Don't worry if you make some mistakes and you can always start again and it doesn't take that long. So uh, just give yourself um, a, a pat on the back if you get as far as finishing one of them and let us know what it looks like. Thank you for watching.